Hey YouTubers, uh, so recently I was thinking about building my own speakers and this led me down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about in building these speakers was what kind of amplifier would I need to drive them. And then I started going down the class looking at all these new class D amplifiers like things from Crown and Behringer and Yamaha and all these big, uh, you know, really powerful 400,000 watt amplifiers that are way nothing cost nothing uh you know i was reading some stuff on the internet about these things and people were saying well in particular with the one of the crowns it had an input sensitivity problem that might make it less than ideal when used with consumer inputs like a cd player or something so they were suggesting well you should put a one of these little tube preamps in front of it um, and so I started looking into some of these cheap Chinese tube preamps. Um, and then I started seeing this stuff about even and odd order harmonics between tube amps and transistor amps. And this is something I'd heard before related to guitar amplifiers. But guitar amplifiers are pretty weird because they purposely uh, invoke a lot of distortion. So they're probably not really comparable to the hi-fi, so I won't even try to get into the guitar amp thing. Um, but on the hi-fi side, I mean, it seems like the ideal amplifier would just reproduce the signal at a larger volume. That's the intent of the engineers that build them anyway. Um, so I started looking into this even and odd harmonics thing, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what. So one of the problems you come across with all this hi-fi stuff is people write all these articles and it's very difficult to describe in words uh, the sounds that you're hearing or supposed to be hearing um, in a way that the reader can accurately reconstruct what you mean. Um, so consequently, uh, and, and these, uh, these things are pretty subtle it turns out. Um, and so there's a lot of snake oil on, on account of that, but I was in particular started looking into it and I found this article on IEEE Spectrum, uh, which that those names will sound familiar to any double E's out there. Um, and I found this graph, these graphs right here, which are showing, um, d some distortions and this is not overdrive distortion, this is uh, extraneous harmonic content introduced by the amplifier um, to the signal. And so on this, on the left is the tube and on the right is the transistor. And these are apparently fairly simple circuits. And so here you see the fundamental at zero decibels. And then here you see these peaks um, at harmonics. So this is at twice the fundamental. This is at uh, three times the fundamental, four times the fundamental, etc. And so I guess this twice, fourth, six are the even, and this three, five, blah, are the odd. Now I don't see the sort of emphasis on even and odd harmonics between the supposedly the tube amplifiers emphasize the even while the transistor supposedly do the odd. I don't see that in these graphs. Hmm. Okay. Um, but one thing that looks a little misleading about these graphs, if you don't know what you're looking at, is the scale because these are in decibels. And the way that decibels work is, to my understanding, every 10 decibels is a doubling or a halving, depending on which way you're going, of the apparent parent perceived volume. So for example, if this spike went all the way up here to minus 10, it would be one half as loud as the fundamental, but it's not. It's down here at minus 50, minus, almost minus 50. So that's half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, 32 times quieter than the fundamental. 32 times, that's a lot. So despite the apparent height of the spike, if this graph were linear instead of logarithmic, because decimals are logarithmic, um, this would be a tiny, tiny, tiny little bump. And then this one is 32nd, 64th, 128th, and so somewhere between 128 and 256. So this is 
more than a hundred times quieter than the fundamental and so on and so forth these are progressively uh you know it's almost a line going down so these are you know sort of exponentially quieter as you get out to these higher harmonics um and similar story on the transistor side although the the levels are more this is only half quarter an eighth rather than a uh, 30 second so it is louder on this transistor amp circuit that they're showing here um but i wanted to figure out okay how does this manifest in the way that this the the thing sounds and so um i had an idea i can try and experiment with audacity and i can let's try we can generate a tone we'll go with a sine wave for a start and we'll say we'll start with a 220 hertz which is a low a one octave blow or c i'm sorry 440 440 is an a so yeah so there's our fundamental so let's add Let's add the first harmonic. Now that's at full volume. So that's what we should be listening for, but of course it's not at full volume, it's at minus 40 decibels. So let's take it down to 40 decibels. Now you notice this audacity slider, the maximum it goes is minus 50. I mean, you can apply this multiple times, but it's going to go down to silence uh, pretty soon. So let's go to minus 40. It pretty much goes down to almost nothing. Now let's mute the fundamental. I'm going to have to turn it up because you can't hear that. Let's turn it up even more. So I don't know if you can hear that. That's what we're listening for. My microphone is starting to feed back. I'm going to have to turn it down. Um, now let me mute the distortion. Can you tell any difference? Now this is, this is going to be on YouTube, so the, you know, the compression will probably just destroy this, so you have to do this experiment yourself. But it's an interesting experiment. Um, so let's add in um, an odd harmonic, which would be 660. Um, uh, track sad new, stereo track, mono track. Generate tone 660. amplify now this harmonic would actually be less than 50 but let's just do it at the same 40 so this is actually worse than would show up on this amp now let's mute these two so we get this kind of recorder like tone as the distortion component, presumably. Um, so the effect is pretty subtle, pretty subtle verging on indetectable and if you drop this from you know minus 40 decibels down to 45 or 50 decibels I'm pretty sure it would be undetectable by me now you may be able to detect it just fine you may point to some flaw in my methodology the amplifier that I'm using right now is uh, I don't know it's a JVC receiver into some old infinity speakers um, 
think it's probably 100 watt amp or something like this through a focus right uh, USB sound card so who knows um, but it does give you an idea when you read all these things about even in odd harmonics you're like what are they talking about what should I be listening for and so this is a way I came up with to try to figure out what should I be listening for if I'm listening for these even or odd harmonics turns out something very 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 subtle uh, to the point that it may be imperceptible so my conclusion is don't worry about your amp if your power amp say your crown needs a little boost on the front end whether the preamp is solid state tube doesn't matter you just want to get the level up um, spend your money on your speakers the amp hardly matters because they're all pretty good that's my conclusion but you might want to try this experiment on your own all right thanks